Hello everyone, welcome to the Sportscast, it's me Andy Grant, I've got Gary Judge with me from Across the Park Podcast and we're coming to you on StreamYard as we are both away at the minute, I think after next week, that's our holidays done I think for a while, so this will be the last one and then we're back on normal, uh, uh, getting away the way we normally do it. First and foremost, we are doing a fantasy football, it's 20 quid to join and I'm going to add 500 pounds to the pot as well. So, however many people are jumping in, that's 20 quid to go, plus I'll throw £500 in for the winner. For last year's winner, took it home over a grand, I think it was. There's prizes for first, second, third place, and every five weeks, whoever does the best in that particular week gets a payout as well. So, loads of reasons to get involved. All you need to do is message to Twitter or Instagram of the Legged Podcast, and we'll send you all the info that you need. So, get involved in that, and let's make it as um, profitable as possible for whoever's lucky enough to win it. Right, Prem starts to see uh, this weekend, mate. So the show will mostly be about footy, but there are some little topics I wanted to just run past to you, get your views on, your opinions on, etc. So the Olympics come to an end. Whether you watched it, whether you didn't watch it, it's been all over the news. What's some of the best news to come after back at the Olympics? Is Dr. Dre of all people has threw his name into the hat and says that he wants to compete in archery? In the 2028 Olympics, which got me then thinking, which got me thinking, which sport do you think you'd be able to master in four years and have a genuine chance of, of competing and winning gold? Uh, break dancing. Well, that's not even going to be in the Olympics. <laughs> oh, so it was just a one off, was it? I think it was a let's put it in, see what it's like, and then everyone realized it was shit. So oh, they can go, but... yeah, well, that, that's me gone then. Um... I don't know. Hopefully they bring karaoke to the next Olympics, and I, I think they'd. <laughs> I don't need four years for that. Though. I feel like I can get a medal. Um, you know what, mate? It was a bit of a farce. I thought in some aspects of the Olympics, so that wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. And karaoke was on there, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I think you'd have to if you, if you're not you're not going to be so naive about it, and the fact that we're you know we're both getting on by the next Olympics, I'll be in my forties. I'm not sure I'd be able to. Master it. I'm not sure physically be able to compete with the the athletes unless I'm going to get you stuff like your with your mates going out and get you stuff. Then I'm going to struggle. Just, so I, I might have to just be that Turkish fella with his hands in his pocket. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think given the military experience, I thought maybe pistol shooting for me. Oh, that's, that's that's what I was going to go for. But uh, just a quick one on that note: if anyone had seen last week's pod or the reels that got put out. There's apparently Joe Rogan has um, someone messaged me, one of the viewers messaged me and said that Joe Rogan's done a podcast with the guys who are behind that kind of special Olympics, the juiced up Olympics. So I've not watched it myself, but apparently it's on there if, if anyone is interested in finding out a bit more on it. So yeah, so yeah, you're go you're going for pistol shooting. I think I will as well. That or actually I think let's let's be honest, you can't Well, do you know what? You're not you're not gonna be breaking any running records, are you? I mean, listen, you're a great runner, but you're not gonna you know, if you're not going to be a great runner in four years, that's going to compete, are you? It's going to have to be archery or pistol shooting. Well, or may- maybe, maybe something like it, it could. Let, let's assume that the time was no, time was no object. Are you allowed to just train whenever you wanted over these four years? Maybe something like I don't know what the, the actual name for the event is. You know, like the the kayak and the do on like rapids and stuff, something oh, yeah. like that. I can maybe enjoy enjoy training no. match, you know what I mean? And don't get me wrong. Let me stop you, I've got you. Why don't we both, me and you, start practicing every day? I'll meet you at Crosby about six in the morning and we'll get into <laughs> synchronized synchronized dive. Synchronized. Do you know what I mean? As we spend a lot of time together. We'll start every day off just in the pool, just jumping in together. So so we, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna are we gonna make a different leg for you so it looks like my leg is something? So it looks oh, like shit, yeah. Oh yeah, I believe <laughs> it wouldn't even be synchronized, would it? I'll, I'll just oh, get yeah. my, I'll just get my other leg amputated. Yeah, it's just, just listen, it's yeah. for Olympic gold, lad. That's the least you can do, to so, be honest. It, I, I, um, think, I think that goes down really well, and we could probably compete in the Paralympics as well. Then, lad, just give us the gold now. <laughs> um, right, so that was the Olympic news. We had uh, in Dart, just a quick one on that. We had. Uh, Gavin Price beat Luke Littler in the Australian uh, Masters, 8-1. Pretty convincing, which apparently just oh, I didn't watch it, but apparently he was just on fire, just absolutely smoked Luke Littler. And um, it was that. 
Uh, I thought a couple of interesting bits in F1 this week. So, do you remember last, uh, quite a while ago now, Christian Horner was getting in a spot to bother. There was a woman who came forward with um, allegations of mm. him basically being a bit too horny. Um, well, anyway, the case was dismissed, got throughout. She was suspended. She then appealed it, but now her appeal has now been dismissed as well. So, that is well and truly all being put to bed. So, Christian Horner is completely clear and, yeah, ready to crack on. The other bit of news in F1, which I thought was actually really refreshing, was uh, Toto Wolf came out and he was speaking about mental health. And I personally think that when anyone talks about mental health, it's always in a kind of negative way, talking about anxiety or how they suffered. You don't hear anyone actually talk, I think, in a positive way about mental health, about how you can you can have coping techniques, you can have coping strategies, how you can use it to your advantage in some ways. And, and that's what Toto Wolf's done. He's, he said he's had struggles in the past. He said he's always open to seek help from people and he now uses it as his superpower that he's known you know he knows he can overcome certain things mentally he knows how strong he is in the past and what he's overcome and he now uses it to empower him and I thought it was a, quite a refreshing way to hear people talk about mental health because it's always quite a stigma isn't it quite negative where he's come out and said listen my mental health my superpower I have struggled with it in the past but actually I use it to my advantage and I, wanna, I just thought that was a yeah a refreshing way to look at mental health so- it's a really good point because even the words now, mental health, people people associate it with negative negativity, don't they? If you say if you, if we say now physical health, you wouldn't think someone's dying of cancer or or that you know the the you know they've got some kind of illness or disease. Whereas mm-hmm. the minute you say mental health, you're thinking oh someone must be struggling. Yeah, Me- mental health is a term to describe your state, isn't it? Your exactly. sleep mentally at that time, and, and again, that could be that could be, you know, people, and, and and you know what, maybe people are a little bit, um, almost a bit embarrassed to talk about the fact that they're in a good place because they feel as though a lot of people aren't. Therefore, I shouldn't be shouting about it. But how many people on 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 social media and, and in life celebrate how well they are physically? Look at the shape I'm in before and after. I think I think more of that probably needs to be done, doesn't it? To say, look, this is where I was. Mentally, this is where I am now. Mentally, and this is how I got there. You, you should, there's loads of um, there's loads of nutritional plans out there. There's loads of physical training plans. There's not enough, is there out there, or not enough people talking about how they've gone from A to B mentally? But you know what? That's such a great point. I've never actually thought of it like that. You see, so many kind of this is my twelve week transformation. It's them standing there with a beer belly. Then the next time, like an Adonis, mm-hmm. you never see anyone say, "Look, six weeks ago I was struggling mentally. You know, anxiety, depression." And now I'm get out of bed. Yeah. yeah, and now I'm feeling great. So yeah, hopefully, people talking about mental health in a more positive way. And again, I just love the word superpower and empowerment, which he, which is from the words you used. So yeah, hopefully that can uh, maybe start a trend. Um, in the US Open, by the way, in the tennis that starts soon. The qualifiers are going on for that, so that'll be something to look forward to. Uh, we had in boxing. Right, I'm not even going to mention either of their names, but what absolutely disgusted me. Uh, when I was looking on the boxer news, was there's a certain boxer who split up with his reality TV show wife, and that was one of the top stories. What the fuck is going not on? Only, I didn't care. Only, it, it wasn't even one of the top stories. It was one, it was like a Sky News alert. What the fuck is going I, on? We, I was walking like with with my wife Jen, and we went for a little walk yesterday, and and she went, "Oh my god." I'm like, what? I've just got a Sky News alert to say that these two split up. How sad is that? That society, in a nutshell, fucked. Mm. The stuff that's going on in the world right now, and people want to know. Well, people don't want to know. That's the thing. The media are just shoving it down your throat. No one is remotely asked about a celebrity. They actually are, though, you know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not, but they are. That's the reality. You, you know, Listen, I really, I really like your wife, Jen. I think she's amazing. But please tell oh, me, no. she's not one of these people. Who I oh no, she wasn't. Asked. She, she was, she okay. was actually just saying how sad is it that Sky News are, are, are putting an alert out, a notification, a push notification onto everyone's phones. who have got that app to let people know about that. And um, but it's just, just to go back to, you, there, there are people clearly, clearly asked. And I only had to know that from skimming through social media in the last 24 hours to go, oh, all the girls you think that, I mean, thankfully no one on my timeline is going devastated about it, but they're saying, like, can't believe, like, some some people I'm I'm, I'm seeing or hearing. 
Yeah. Do you know what? I know what's really sad. There's another bit of news, which it's only if you go looking for it, you would have found this out. But during the Olympics, two members of the GB boxing team, there was a doctor and a physio, were the first people to respond to the Uzbekistani uh, coach who had a heart attack, had a cardiac arrest, mm. and they got two, and they were the first two people ends up saving his life, and he's now in a stable condition. Now, why is that not a Sky News push notification? Do you know what I mean? There's, yeah. two, in the Olympics, two members of the GB boxing team are the first to respond when someone has a cardiac arrest, and he's now still alive. Wow, how incredible is that? How, how proud yeah. should, we, should we be as a nation? And yet people are getting notifications because I love Ireland contestants and some fucking bit part boxer are split up. Mm. It's a fucking disgrace, honestly. Oh, it winds me up. Oh. Yeah. Um, in other news, you had, uh, just keeping on the Olympics for a minute, we spoke about it last week. And actually, you know what? Keeping on society and social media, what really upset me is we spoke last week about... Um, Again, I look, I look at, even look terrible now. Uh, it was the girl who won gold. Uh, we spoke about it on the podcast last week. We made a reel about it. It was amazing. Uh, he had Shinton. He had Shinton. He had Shinton. So, we do a reel about that. And it gets however much engagement it does, I don't know. But then we spoke about the transgender boxer or the men and women boxer and the controversy. And everyone was just arguing in the comments amongst themselves, right? To the point where the boxers have now come out. And they're looking to to file a legal complaint against the online harassment that we, that they've received. I was thinking me and you were, you know, were quite open in the fact that we don't know all the facts and stats, and it was a bit of a grey area. I think we actually used the term grey area. Um, mm. Not everyone's using that. People are jumping on one way or the other. I've seen it in the comments, and now one of the boxers are coming forward and saying, "Well, yeah, lo- I don't know how it worked, but they're launching some sort of legal complaint about <coughs> the online abuse that they've received, which." Again, if they feel aggrieved and all that, then fair play to them. But um, it just it just shows you society doing it. How like rather than jumping in the comments and go, "Well done, Keely, you made us all proud. Well done," people are more bothered to go on. Yeah, she's a man. Yeah, she's a woman. Yeah, it should be allowed. No, it shouldn't be allowed. It's just a yeah. It's just a sad state of affairs, unfortunately. It, it is, yeah. And again, it goes back probably to one of the reasons why then maybe are more people in modern society who are struggling with the negative sides of mental health than actually focusing on the positives. It's like people just want to latch on to things that they can they can smite over and they can throw stones at and they can just... It's crazy, it's man. Sad, sad, mate. It's really sad. Um, and the last bit, two bits of news on boxing is boxing will not appear in the next Olympics. So like breakdancing, the Olympic Committee have had enough of it and fucked it off, and it just kind of sums up, I think, the, the state that boxing's in at the moment. We've had, you know, some pretty high-profile drug sheets this past year. We've had the farce of, again, what I've just said, the whole men and women competing against each other, and, yeah, the Olympic Committee have just said it's not happening no more, and then um, the IOC have said, yeah, it's it's not going to be in the 2028 Olympics. And the last bit is Eubank is talking up a Canelo fight in May. <clears throat> Whether there's any truth in that or not, I don't know, but he's... Trying his best to talk himself into a decent payday. Just interestingly on that as well, you've probably seen or heard Billy Joe Saunders kind of talking up a comeback as well. Um, okay. Obviously, it's a terrifically talented boxer, but he's... But, ugh, I can't remember when his last fight was. It must be three, four years ago, maybe longer. Three, At least three years ago. I'm just going to actually yeah. Google it now. But yeah, again, very talented boxer. But it, it, it's, you know, if you think that... If you're watching this as a... I guess a fair weather boxing fan is probably put myself in that category myself to be fair mm. you know compare that to Tyson Fury Tyson Fury was out of it for maybe two years so his, his last fight was actually um, against Canelo in July 2021 so yeah three years ago mm. against Canelo um, I wonder whether that's a financial decision or whether he's just Lost a bit of purpose, whether he's bored. It'd be interesting to get into his mindset to know, does he actually mm. really miss it? Does he want it? Or does he just need a couple of quid? I imagine it's not a financial thing. Um, I pro- it's probably more the fact that he's not been in the limelight. He's he's properly egotistical <laughs> man. Um, yeah. Definitely rates himself up there. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see if if he does follow through with that. And, and if he does, mm. who, he ends up, who he ends up facing. Because again... It, and you can't question us. You certainly can't oh. question us. But that's his. That's his only defeat against Canelo. A lot of talents. Um, yeah. 
th- you know, 30 fights. I'm just looking, just confirming it's now 30 fights, 14 KOs, only one defeat, and that was to Canelo. So, you know, he's yeah. still, he's still, he's still of an age that he can get back into it. It'd be interesting if he, um, if he does come back in and if he does at what weight he comes back in. Mm. What I will say on boxing as well, not to do it like new news, but I was lucky enough to be on holiday last week uh, and spent uh, five days with him, was Matthew Hatton. Um, what a guy he was, obviously fought Canelo as well. He only, I think he was beat five times in his career, never knocked out, only ever lost on points, but just what a top fella. And it was just fascinating to spend so much time with him, talking about some of the fights that he's fought, Kelbrook, uh, Canelo. And it was just fascinating to know what it was like actually being there. Do you know what I mean? It was a uh, so yeah. Shout out to Matty and yeah. really, really top guy. Right, we'll move on to footy, mates. Thank God the Prem is back. Don't know about you, but probably you more than me. You probably wanted the season to you know to end mm-hmm. and just forget about it for a while. Um, and and I, I have I've been like that over the seasons, but I've, I've I'm ready for it to come back now. I've missed it, and I'm I feel energized and ready to get back into being obsessed with. 11 millionaires running around kicking a ball every week, which is pathetic as <laughs> that is. Um, what we've done for all our listeners is we've done a kind of league table of what we think, some surprise packages, top goal scorers, etc. But before we get into that, there are some bits of news around all that. Um, Pochettino looks like he's going to become the new USA head coach, which is be interesting. You've seen the success that Emma Hayes has had uh, going from you know the Premier League or the Women's League, if you like, in England to uh, winning gold at the Olympics. It'd be interesting to see what Poch can do, do now. I think, do you know, I think it's a bit sad, though? I mean, you know, one of the most highly rated coaches in, in club football in terms of... Is he, you know, is he though? Yeah. I think say highly rated. Coaches, I, I think he is. He's got a bit of a reputation of developing young players. He he, he certainly took Tottenham on. You know, he took mm-hmm. Tottenham to a Champions League final with, with little to no budget. I know I know people arguing, oh, we should have won something with them. And but where he took them in the time that he was there, Chelsea for me done a brilliant job last season, given all the stuff mm. he was dealing with. Um, mm. I think it's I think it's sad. You know, he's had a, he had a tough time at PSG dealing with it. But as an hour, yeah. I, I would have liked to have seen Poch at a at a top club again. Um, I, I agree with you to an extent in the sense that I almost feel a bit sorry for him, as in because you think yeah. I agree. He was unlucky at Chelsea. I think he, he, he massively outperformed at, at Spurs. You know, he took the punch. He was punching way above the weight there. I agree. It's a bit of a poison challenge. PSG. You've seen that with loads of manage, managers. So I agree. Yeah, I, I feel a bit sorry for him. And also, when I feel to... sorry for him, it's... Well, yeah. Listen, he's he's a multi-millionaire yeah. football manager. I don't, I don't mean it in that sense. I just mean. Hard lines a little bit then because where does he go? Let's let's face it, the USA are going to win the World Cup. So, what is success mm. for them? And then where does he go from there? So, That's yeah, it. I think his his career has just almost gone to this weird kind of like, yeah. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I never. To be honest, I never really understood when everyone was like almost using the same kind of language you've just used then, and you've seen it like all the top one that's saying, you know, Poch for the United job, Poch. It. Yeah, he's a he's a good manager. Do you know what I mean? He's a but I wouldn't put him in like the kind of. Ancelotti, Guardiola, Mourinho, Klopp kind of no. thing. You know what I mean? No, no. But I, I think that the, the people you just mentioned there are head and shoulders above most of the rest. I think you've probably mm-hmm. got five, four or five coaches that sit on their own, and the rest of them are kind of vying to be up there. And I think I know he yeah. wasn't doing that then, though. But there are people who, who have said, like, almost put him a little bit like that. I think maybe just my opinion. Mm. No, I mean, all right. If if you look at the the, the clubs below that. Um, just trying to trying to think the the the, the clubs or the man is he best than Ten Hag? Yeah, you'd probably say yeah. Arteta's has done a similar job at the moment with Arsenal because he hasn't really won nothing. So what Poch yeah, on the fair top. point. So I'll probably put him put him around that level. Therefore, you would think teams like I don't know how, how much longer mm. Simeone got at Atletico. Um, I thought Barcelona would be maybe looking at someone like him because they're, they're behind Real Madrid. They're looking to try and... I don't know. I, I just feel as though USA... Yeah, no, the, the, the Arteta's a great point, Gary, because if, if Arteta suddenly leaves Arsenal at the end of the season and goes and manages a fucking a, a, yeah, USA, you'd be like, what the fuck, wouldn't you? So, yeah. Yeah. Fair point, yeah. But, anyway. Um, yeah, you've got a um, bit of news on Man City. You've got Oscar Bob has just fractured his leg at training. 
that was the latest news. So that's a big dent. No um, way for, for them. Yeah, I don't know how serious it is. I just seen it. the the kind big of dent for my my positions. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. We get him out. Um, get him out of his fancy fuzzy team as well. Yeah, you had uh, the Man City charges. It looks like the kind of court proceedings going to be starting later this year. It looks like by the spring we should have answers to what's going to be going on. And also, I've seen something along the lines of if teams want to start suing Man City, they need to get their legal proceedings in before, I think, it's November because that's then the six-year kind of thing. And I think, listen, we can do a whole show on that when it starts becoming a bit more in the in the main news. But I, th- I think that's what Man City have just done really well is they've known the kind of timescales of these things. And you speak to any Man City fan, they say, oh, we haven't been charged. I mean, you did get charged. It was just the fact that it was over the time period. So you, mm-hmm. you did cheat, but they just couldn't go back and nearly for cheating because it was over the fucking six year period. Mm-hmm. So this whole thing of like, oh, we and I think that's a similar thing what they've kind of dragged out now. They've made sure that the likes of Liverpool or I don't know, your Arsenal, United, so or even I don't know, Everton's anyone I'm guessing could have had a, a right to sue them, no doubt. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if any clubs come forward and actually put a legal case against suing them. And then, obviously, in the new year, you're going to have all these charges. Whether they get charged or not will be um, will be another question. But I did see they've gone, and sh- they've gone as short as eight to one to get relegated, which is just crazy. Well, the amount of people who've been impacted by City in some way, shape, or form, it could be as big as the fucking PPI claim. <laughs> it's just a saga. This <laughs> just start getting yeah. Instagram thing saying, "Have you been affected by Mad City's success?" Hey, you'll get me fucking going here, all the money I bloody yeah. lost on betting on the pool to win the league. I'll, I'll yeah. be having a show going to bloody bet three six five. Man, it's, it's, it's mad, isn't it? You open up, open up that kind of worms. But you imagine people who've lost jobs and stuff because I don't know, you know, certain things weren't hit, performance targets yeah, but, is weren't hit. Oh, oh, people, yeah, teams, clubs have been relegated. They've had to lay staff off. Players have, you know, been relegated from the, the Premier League, and they're, you know, they. are their Premier League mm. bonuses or whatever they have. It's oh, mate, it's it's massive. And that's why though it's it's so big. That's why not'll happen. Because it's mm. it's so much of a headache, it's probably you just go, ah oh, fuck, no watch it fuck it either. But mm. anyway, we shall see. Um bit of news on uh, the old firm. They've come out and said I'm actually away now with a couple of big uh, Rangers fans and they weren't happy that the old the first two old firm dar- derbies will have no fans in. Mm, um, one, sorry, no, no away fans. Sorry, no away um, fans. Yeah, that, so that's again unfortunate for him because that, 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 that's that's been well. It's been Celtic fans who've not been able to. Oh, is it? Is it just been Celtic fans who've not been able to go? No, think, it's been in general. Yeah, actually, you know what? You might be right, but I think they've said both. Both now mm. will have no away fans. The first two old firms. So it's just a shame, isn't it? Because you listen, it's a derby. You want it to be. It's one of the most yeah. iconic derbies, isn't it? You want it to be proper, all that kind of grit, and you know. Anyway, it's it's not happening. And the last bit of news, right before we go to our predictions, is uh, poor old Conor Gallagher. I spent five nights in a no doubt a six star hotel in Madrid, thinking he's going to get a great move to Atletico, and he's now not going. And he's back in Cobham training with I think the under 18s I don't know what he's done to piss someone off there, but he's having a nightmare, isn't he? I, I don't think it's necessarily. Uh, I think uh, Mureska's identified that he wants a certain player in that position. And Conor Gallagher, just Conor Gallagher to me, and again, I don't want to get too tactical over it. He's a box to box midfielder, isn't he? Old school mm. field where you play two midfielders, they get up and down. I don't think he's a hold midfielder. I don't quite think he's an attacking midfielder. They're definitely going to be playing more of like a four two three one, aren't they? I think he's quite happy with the likes of Lavia and, and Enzo Fernandez, etc., in those holding mm. positions. And he definitely wants the likes of Jewsbury Hall, Hall, Madawaki, and all the other 20 odd attack on the field as they've got. <laughs> I just, I'm yeah. not quite. And, and he, he needs to bring some passion because he was. Oh, he's homegrown, isn't he? Yeah. There's a, a homegrown player. It's all, it's all net, isn't mm-hmm. it? I just think, though. Um... This old training on the under eighteens thing, and it's all a bit like fucking hell, right? Yeah, he doesn't fit into your plans, but come on, he's still a he's still a human being. Do you know mm. what I mean? I just think he's yeah. yeah. yeah I, feel, I feel a bit sorry for him. It's, um, it's probably just they've got no no room in the changing rooms <laughs> again. It's, good. it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, there is actually that that point. Yeah, right. Um, I, I did see a thing on yeah. on Chelsea as well as in the same time when Liverpool signed Bobby Firmino, which seems like a you know. A, 
it seems like a decade ago. Um, mm. They've signed was. the same amount of players in two years than Liverpool have since they signed Firmino. So um, it's just, I think I think that's 35 players. I think Liverpool have signed, I think it was, since we signed Bobby. They've signed that in, in under under this to Todd Bowley, which is just crazy, isn't it? Car, car, the Cole Palmer thing was his contract as well. Yeah, it's, it's, was it twenty thirty three? He's got a nine year contract now. He extended his contract from six years to nine years. Do you know if they're bumping his wage up ten percent every year? I can't wait to see what he's going to be on in like twenty thirty three. He'd be on, he'd be on about no, two million quid a week. Well, I think what it was after after the season he had, and I guess a little bit of the um, transition the Euros and being like the impact player and stuff. His agents probably gone to the club saying, "No, we want we want better terms now." And they've mm-hmm. looked at them and we can't afford to give you better terms on this length of contract. So you'll have to extend the contract to spread that money yeah. out even further. That's what they have to do with them. Just madness, isn't it? So, like we did last season, which you actually won. Oh, that by, a, by a cancer, by the way. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was in the bag for me. Yeah, I thought it was in the bag for me at one point, and then. Anyway, this is a new season. We're going again. Right, should we go through the top scorer, most improved players to watch in relegation risk, or should we just go straight into the 1-20? to 20? Um, Let's do the 1-20. to 20. In fact, let's do the players. No, let's do the 1-20 to 20 first, and then do okay. the players after it. So we'll go back and forth, if you like. I'll kick it off then. I think winning the league, it's fucking obvious, isn't it? Man City, I think... I think this will be Pep's last season, and I think listen, no one's ever, no one has ever done four in a row. I think I think to do five in a row will that's that's what he'll be after. I think he put everything into it. He'll want to go out with a bang. However, I don't think it will be a kind of you know under point season. I think it'll be a lot closer. And because what I will say, it sounds crazy to say anything negative about Pep and what he's done. I forget the kind of bitterness and jokiness about the 115 charges. Listen, let's face it, he's an unbelievable manager. But what I think sometimes he gets wrong is letting players go at the wrong time. And you look at Cole Palmer last season, I think that was I think that was a big mistake. I know they still won the league and you'd argue, well, they didn't need them, but what a talent he is. And I think the same about uh, Alcaraz. Listen, I know they got 80 million for him, but he scored some big goals for them last season. You know, he played a lot of minutes. I've seen a stat there. I think he was the fourth. He played the fourth most minutes, I think it was, last season. And I always Ooh. thought a bit of him as a bit part player, but actually he has a bigger impact, I think, than people realise. And I think letting him go, I think, was was a wrong move. Uh, if Haaland gets injured, you kind of start looking where the goal's going to come from, etc. So, and, and again, if this news of Oscar Bob with a fractured leg, um, it, it could be a worry for them. That being said, though, they have got an unbelievable squad. They've got an unbelievable manager. And I think Man City will win the league again, unfortunately. Yeah, not gonna not gonna disagree. Um I, I have I have said pretty much I think the only difference and, and obviously this gives away who my second place is, I think the only difference between Man City now and Arsenal is the centre forwards. I think if City if Arsenal has a top centre forward, as I went with them. Um, mm. You look at the likes of, um, you know, the, the goal return that Arsenal got last season off the likes of Saka and other guys, etc. He brought in Calafiori from, um, he was an AZ, I think it was, but, but from Italy. Um, again, extra cover at left back. I think, they, for me, I think they got the two centre backs in the league. I'm going on about Arsenal here, so I think Arsenal are going to win the league. But I do think City will still win it, but I don't think there's going to be much in it. And I do think Arsenal. Mm. We'll take points off City. I think Liverpool will take points off City. But I think there'll be other teams that'll take probably more points off the teams I've just mentioned then. Mm. I think Savio, by the way, he's one of my players to watch. I've been giving that away already. He's a top, top player. He was unreal at uh, Girona last season. I think he's going to be a huge player for them. I think he's probably one of the reasons why they've allowed Alvarez to leave. He's another player who's going to chip in with goals. Um, and I think, I think you look at the games or the periods that Haaland didn't play last year. And although they were still getting wins, they were still getting results, it wasn't that same dynamic. And I think he's realised Alvarez mm. isn't a replacement for Haaland. He's just another attacking player. And I think that's why he's gone mm. with that. I don't disagree with some of the things you've said, by the way. I think it could be a loss. But 
with the likes of Oscar Bond, your kid now now injured, Lewis, O'Re- O'Reilly, they've got some young players, they've just suddenly just yeah. drift, you know, brought us into the team. You've got Doku, who had his first season last season. I think he'll come on and be better this season for it. Grealis didn't do much last season. You could get more out of him. Bernardo Silva is, mm. is, is what he is. I just think they've got too many players that are too familiar with that system. Yeah. It'll be enough to get them in the league, yeah. Yeah. So we have got second I think it's I think it's Arsenal. Arsenal, mm-hmm. yeah, I think uh, again Julian Timber, another player who, who was injured most of last season coming back in. Again, they've made another addition in defence. A little bit I guess I'm a little bit disappointed more for Arteta because I do like Arteta. Um I would have liked to have seen him been given a better chance. I think if they'd have brought in a top forward, a real mm-hmm. forward of, of pedigree that could lead the line, he could get them goals consistently. I was a went for them this season to win the league, but I just think City have got a bit too much. Yeah, again, I've got Arsenal seconds as well. I think, uh, I think again, they'll run them close, but a little bit like what you said, I just don't think they've, they've done enough in the transfer market or, or to, to, to just close that gap, essentially. i seen, like, you know, Arteta was doing great little things for them, like he's... Um, he, he, he got a pickpocket to come in at a, at a meal fun. and he was getting them all to rob the phones and rob the watches and the whole point was to you know, stay alert. And as great as all that is, I don't think it's going to gain you the five, six, seven points you needed to, mm-hmm. to get close to the City. And I also think the big thing for Arsenal, although they've got players in and get that, they were so lucky last season with injuries. All of their big players never got injured. And I remember when Liverpool you know, lost Van Dijk for, for quite a period. When you lose one of your star players like that, your whole season is just a write-off. And I think they were really lucky. And if they get any injuries to any of the big players, I think that could really derail their season. So, yeah, I've got them for second, like yourself. Third place, I'm going for Liverpool. Um, And honestly, I don't know what to expect from Liverpool this season. I think it really is a flip of a coin. I think they could, they could hopefully... You know, make a challenge and, and be a bit closer to City than they were last season. But I think more, more than probably not, they'll probably fight in for third, fourth. I think Champions League. I think, you know, I, I think Klopp squeezed everything he could out of them last season. Do you know what I mean? And, and they done really well to to be in the title race for as long as they did. If if, if Arna Schlock can do that again, I think that's a great season. But I just think the fact we haven't made any signs, the fact we lost out on that. that um, the kind of number six from Sociedad. It's, it's looking a bit ominous now that we're not going to sign anyone, which is a disappointment. You know, new manager coming in. I, I don't know. It, I, I think we'll be battling for third and fourth more than first and second, unfortunately. Exactly. I've gone for Liverpool as well. My comments were the manager, manager looks to have settled in pre season and the players seem happy, but I just don't think they've done enough in the market to compete with the top two. That they were. Yeah. yeah, and and that's the thing, you know, it's all right saying, you know, new manager, new ideas and all that, but you've got to have done something completely different to close that gap. And if you're looking at all there is is new ideas, which was, again, ideas might be great. And, and I'm hoping I'm be sitting here in, in May saying Canelo's ideas won us the league, but we've spoke there about Arsenal's, uh, you know, kind of ins and outs and, and, and Man City's depth. We just don't compete with that at all. So I hope. I'm wrong, and I hope we have a great season. But listen, if we, if we won a cup and I finished third, I'd be happy. Yeah, and I, I think the other thing is, if you look at the difference between the the you know Arsenal, City, and Liverpool last season, you know what was it really? And I think for me, it was the defence. I think Liverpool's defence let you down. Whether that, I don't mean the back four. I just think generally used defence, and you were not as secure as Arsenal. Yeah. And at mm. times, even I don't think you are a secure as City, and you have not really done anything to address that. Um, so, mm. yeah. Go on, who have you got for fourth? I've gone for Spurs. Okay. Yeah, I've gone for Spurs. I, I, I mean, I, there's two things that influenced me. First, I had a close look at, at the results from last season, kind of what, what, what separated them from getting a top four place last season. And it was there was injuries at key times to to, to players Madison uh, for long periods and stuff. That some of the XGs they had in some of the games that they drew, you know, maybe they like to Charles are missing chances. Even though I don't think Solanke is a world class forward, I think he gets them an extra ten goals. 
Yeah. And I think that'll be enough more than anything else to get them the points they didn't have last season. And I think the other teams that I've kind of put them ahead of, I just still think that a season away from, from being better than Spurs. Mm. I've actually gone for Man United in fourth. I think um, they've made some good signings. It's Ten Hag's third season now. You know the first two seasons. As much as he's, you know, he gets a lot of stick. He's won two trophies in two seasons. It's the third season here now. He's got no excuse. He's got that kind of new ownership model here now. With he's got none of the background noise, or at least it's it's quieting down a little bit. The background noise. I think the good signings he's made, but also he's got so many good young players. And one of my players mm-hmm. to look out for is uh, Kobe Mainu. I think I think he's going to be great for them this season. I really do, and I think. Um, I think it'll be between Liverpool and Man United for that top four. I really do. In the fifth, I, I've gone. I admit, sorry, I admitted they had them there. And then I, I've, yeah, I'll come to it in a bit. Go on. Yeah, and I've gone for what your fourth place. I've gone for Spurs in fifth. Again, you mentioned them then. I actually think Solanke, yeah, he's not world class, but I think he's a really good player. And I think he, um, I think he, he'll be brilliant for them this season. I think that's a great signing for them. And again, Big Ange, just second season, he knows the league a little bit better. Uh, and I think, yeah, it'd be, I think they'll be pushing the Pooling United for top four, but I've got them down as fifth at the minute. I've actually gone for Chelsea in fifth. So I I, I moved United from fourth into sixth. Uh, so give me six plates there as well. But I've gone for Chelsea. I, I, I just, again, I can't not look at that squad and think just if he can get a solid 16 players that he can pick. Mm. From and rotate around. I've got two of the two of the players in their squad that I think will be placed to look out for. I think there were that many players last season that were making their were playing their first season in the Premier League and be so much mm. better for it this season. There were a couple of players that were injured for a lot of last season that I think that, you know they'll improve from. There were so many players at the start of last season. They were missing. Mm. They were missing eighteen players at one point. I don't know for a squad that big that maybe isn't a significant. But to, to have that many players missing and to still manage mm-hmm. to finish sixth, he finished sixth that season. Then he finished mm-hmm. five points off the Champions League. So I, I think it's going to be very close between you, Tottenham, and Chelsea. See, to be mm-hmm. fair, um, but I, but I think I think just a bit more know how from the, the senior players at Tottenham and, and, and Liverpool will probably get them a bit further up the league. But I think this will be. I wouldn't say a breakthrough season for Chelsea, but I think it'll be a, a, a far more encouraging season. I think you'll probably find towards the end of the season, Chelsea have got a bit of identity and they've got, rather than just Cole Palmer, I think they could have three or four players that that, that look like proper Premier League players. Yeah, it's some of the reasons why I'll, I'll put Chelsea in sixth myself. I think um, I think just because of the ins and outs and stuff, they'll have a slow start to the season, but I think like last season, they were unstoppable towards the end of the season. Cole Palmer, I think didn't finish that many goals behind Haaland in the end and I think you know the new manager coming in it might take a little bit of a while to get going but like the points you've just made I think they'll come good towards the end of the season but I think a slow stuttery start might make just sixth they've seen them for this season but yeah I agree they, they're gonna, if they, listen if they get going and they, they get off the blocks quickly they, they could easily yeah, get a top four but I think it'd be quite a slow start and I've got them as sixth Maybe yeah I've gone I've I've gone to United six. As I said, the only thing I've got to add on, on top of yours is I think the design, the sign of the list is is a, is a very good one. I think along mm. inside Martinez, they've got a solid you know pair. They can keep them too fit. And like you said about Kobe Mainu, and, and I think the, I think Casemiro might have a better season. I know he looks like his legs have gone, but if you're playing consistently alongside Mainu and getting to do all the running, just yeah. that experience and somebody will drop in in between them two centre backs and just shore up that back. Back four or back five or whatever. Um, by the way, I saw Luke. I saw Luke Shaw's got injured again. By the way, <laughs> crazy. Honestly, that is crazy. How, how injury prone he is. But yeah, sorry, Sean, we're, up to, uh, um, we're up to uh, seven, seven for you. Seven. I've got. I've gone for Villa. Um, I put, and I'll just read out the comments. I mean, uh, I was a little concerned for them when they lost Luis Diaby. They've added. They have actually added some more depth and youth to the squads. Um, and I actually think that the best the best signing they've made, ironically, this summer has been bringing Cameron Archer back in 15 million. I thought he looked really good towards the end of the season for a poor Sheffield United team. So I think he, he could do all right this season. But I just don't see them ma- matching last season's achievement, particularly with the extra strain of Champions League football. 
Yeah, I've actually gone for Villa in seventh as well. Uh, mostly because, again, I think a little bit like Newcastle when they got Champions League and they had a massive drop-off, I think it'll just be exactly the same for Villa. So, yeah, I've got them in seventh. Eighth, I've gone for Newcastle. I think... So, I've gone Newcastle as well, right? Okay, so... Um, I think this idea of Newcastle getting Champions League, getting investors coming in, new owners, and then them being, you know, the new Chelsea, the new Man City, the new Man United, Liverpool... I think those teams are completely gone because of FFP. And this idea of them being, this again, just powerhouse in the, in the Premier League, it, that's just a, unfortunate for Newcastle fans, just a pipe dream now. And I think going back to the days of finishing kind of the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th is what Newcastle will be about for the time being. Um, so for that reason, I think yeah, they'll be stuck in 8th place. Yeah, no, it's... Um, I, I couldn't... Couldn't disagree with you. I think the only thing to note in Newcastle that could actually end up them switching positions with Villa is the return of Sandro Tonali. I think obviously mm-hmm. he only played a few games. There was all of the controversy that he went away with. He's a top top player. I think mm-hmm. you can keep him and Bruno G- Gimarash fit alongside um, the big Brazilian name again. The massive oh, Brazilian what fella. Not one of the white 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 was here, a full, was it for yeah, Joel Linton? Joel Linton. Joel Linton. Yeah. Solid three in there. Um, Andy Gordon and Isak, they've got you know, pure pace. So if they can keep those players fit, I think they could easily finish above Villa, given the Villa have got, mm. again, the Champions League exploits. But yeah, I've gone for them in eighth. And in ninth, I've gone for Brighton. Um, again, quite short with the comments. I've just said, typically, shoe business from Brighton. One of their players I've got as one of my players to watch. But I'm just not sure the coaches is, is is better than Zerbi and is going to take them much further than what they, they were last season. Yeah, in ninth I've went for Palace. I think they, they had a decent end to last season. Um, but it's all going to depend on what players they can keep in. I know Newcastle are slip, slipping around gay hardly. If they keep him, I think that will that will that will define a lot of their season if they can keep him. Um, but yeah, I've, I've gone for them in ninth. For tenth, I've gone for West Ham. They made loads of signings. I think they made the most thing in the Prem. I think it's just going to be how long it takes them to gel. Um, and I also think West Ham will suffer a little bit, like Everton fans do. I think maybe you disagree with this, but realising how good David Moyes is. I think the new manager, listen, he could, he could prove great, but I, I just think, like I always, like we spoke about before, I just think Everton and West Ham fans are deluded sometimes in you know, the good old days when they had Moyes and the success he brought. And whether this... I just don't know what West Ham think this manager's going to do that that David Moyes didn't. I honestly just, it, it blows my mind. So um, I just think, yeah, bang on mid-table, West Ham at 10th place. Yeah. No, I've gone West Ham as well for 10th place. Um, I, I just said, be careful what you wish for. Uh, be careful what you wish for, Hammers fans. I said, Julian Lopetegui you signed a, a bundle of defenders, but I'm not actually sure that's what West Ham's issue was. The squad looks a little bit unbalanced to me, and I'm not sure that Nicholas Fulcraig is the answer, although I do think he'll chip in with a few goals from set pieces. Uh, I think this could be a frustrating season for the fans as a result. I see what I'm saying. I think that's where West Ham are. And I think, as you just mm. said then, about you know maybe at times Everton fans and, and West Ham fans being a little bit disillusioned as to where we are. I think Temp is... Exactly where West Ham fans are, at the, or West Ham are at the moment, um, mm. and and maybe you could argue they could or should be doing best than Brighton, but I, I don't know what makes them think that that that's a divine right. Um, yeah, eleventh. I've gone for Brighton in eleventh. Th- yeah, sorry, I've gone for Brighton in eleventh. And to be honest, the eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth, I think they're all so interchangeable. And I put it in this mix, as you'll see in a minute. And without being derogatory to all these teams, I just think it's those kind of teams where you just think you're not playing for nothing. And it's it's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Kind of, you know, we, I made this joke and kind of got a, a lot of stick for it when I said it, it'd be great if Everton went down because the fans would probably get, you know, they'd have a, they'd, they'd, they'd win the league, but they'd win the championship. And then they'd, if not, they'd go to the playoffs and they'd get a doubt at Wembley. And that joy would be better than just having a bog standard. Table of finishing 12th, 13th, 14th. And I think the next few teams, as I want to mention, are one of those teams who are going to have one of those seasons. And I put Brighton in 11th, just a kind of bog standard season. What you know, won't be doing not in the ex- extraordinary, won't be too terrible, won't be too great. And you know, I've got Brighton in 11th. 
even <coughs> I've actually got a, um, really making the assumption that we don't um, have any points deductions. My commentary, uh, I said, give Everton the points back that we had deducted last season, and we'd have finished twelfth at a point off tenth. Despite losing an arm, I think the squad is strong, as I've said to you last week. And depending on how they deal with the Dominic Calvert Lewin situation, it could be significantly stronger. I also don't think the teams above Everton from last season have improved it note. So I expect 11 to be a more a more than realistic finish. Um, yeah, I've said enough on Everton in terms of the, the last few shows. I, I do think that the Dominic Calvert Lewin situation is going to have a huge impact on that. I.e., what I mean is it's almost inevitable he's going to leave in this window. It's just how we replace him and who we replace him with. If we replace him with a, a, a you know, proven target man, I don't necessarily think we need to, pre, uh, you know, replace him with a proven goal scorer because last season he only got seven goals. So I think mm. just an adequate goal scorer and a proven target man, someone who can bring other players into the game, who can be dominant in the air as Cavill Ingen is, even when he doesn't score and has got a little bit of pace. Those, those, those attributes are not easy to come by. So I think that situation and how it plays out is going to be key. But I, I do genuinely believe the squad is significantly stronger than it was last season. I think we've got a manager who can grind out draws, grind out clean sheets. You know, only only one goalkeeper, um, I think it was Edison, got more clean sheets than, than Pickford last season. So I think that's mm-hmm. as, as good, a, good a testimony to how, you know, how strong the defence was. Uh, in 12th, I've gone for Palace. And... Um, I put Kamada and Saar look like decent signings. Again, Ishmael Saar, everyone was after them a few years ago. You know, we've gone mm-hmm. to France for a year. And now he's you know, he's come back. I think that's a really shrewd signing. Um, but Glasgow made an encouraging impact on the, on the team last season. But I think losing Elise is a huge blow. And I think the other thing I've got to say about Glasgow, even though he did, you know, obviously see a big lift, he come in at the time when Eze come back to fitness, Elise come back yeah. to fitness. He's quite lucky, thing, wasn't he? Yeah, the one thing I would credit him with is he brought um, Mateta back into the team, and what an impact he's had on him. Mm. Yeah, he looks like a you know a, suddenly a top Premier League forward. I think he got 11, 11 goals in his last thirteen games. Yeah, in twelfth place, I've gone for Fulham, but again, I've put here could quite easily be more like sixteenth. I just think just the epitome of a proper mid-table side. Hundred percent. I've gone for Fulham in thirteenth. I've said yeah. I think they'll struggle this season. They, they've lost key players and not replaced them with like for like quality. This is the longest that Marco Silva's been in the job, um, and he clearly doesn't feel back at the moment. I think he'll be gone by January, and Fulham will be languishing. Yeah. So I, I only think they'll finish thirteenth because they'll probably bring a new manager in in January and probably get a little bit of a bump and end up around yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. easily finish lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirteenth, uh, I've gone for Everton. I think. Pretty much what you've just said. I th- not just Carver Lewin, though. I think. I, d- I mean, I don't know whether I know Pickford only just signed a new contract, but you just don't know if if the off the field situation worsens, and yeah. suddenly it's like, right, we need to get some some coffers in the bank, and they suddenly, you know, a last minute sell one of your kind of most expensive players, one of your most important players. Like for example, a ridiculous offer comes in for Pickford. I don't know where that would come from. But if it's a big offer and they say, you know what, we need to do it because otherwise we're going into administration. If something like that was to happen, I think you just could be way down the oh. table. But if that doesn't happen, um, again, given all the points you've just said, I thought, you know, I was really impressed with how many, uh, how few goals you just kind of conceded. And yeah, I think 13th would do is easily achievable, barring no more points, points, uh, points deductions. Um, yeah. 14th, 14th, I've gone for Wolves. Again, I just feel it's a terrible for anyone. I don't doubt we have any Wolves fans listening, but like, just one of those like nothing seasons. I just think like could easily be twelfth, could easily be sixteenth. Just I have just got them bang there and fourteenth. With really not much to say on them, to be honest. Exactly the same. I put my comments were average recruitment during the summer, but Gary O'Neill's got a decent record of making teams hard to beat. Although I do worry worry that they won't score enough goals, particularly after losing Neto. Mm, yeah, big loss for them. Yeah. Fifteenth, uh, I've gone for Forest. Um, I put another summer and another loads of ins and outs. I don't like this Forest squad, and I don't like the manager. I don't. Mm. I don't think they'll get relegated, but I also don't see them finishing too far away from the drop down. Mm. Be interesting when I put them. Fifteenth, uh, I've gone for Brentford. I think uh, if he keeps again, only if they keep Ivan Tony, I think uh, 
it's going to be massive for them. I think if he, uh, yeah, I think a lot will just depend on that because it, and if he has a good season, by the way, they could be more like tenth. But if they lose him, again, they could they could be further down the bottom. I really like the manager. Um, I think, I think Brentford. You know, they, they've been great since they came up, and I think yeah, fifteenth for me at the minute. Sixteenth, I've gone for Leicester. Uh, I feel like when I think of Leicester, listen, they've won the Premier League. Is how mad is that? Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely crazy. Um, and I just, I just think the mentality they'll have is they feel like a Premier League team. I don't think they'll feel like a a championship side that come up. I think they think they'll feel like they deserve to be there. They've had loads of experience. They've got a great new manager coming in. Um, and I think I put them as 16th, but I could easily see them finishing more 11th, 12th. No, fair enough. Um, I have gone for Brentford 16th. But I thought they were a bit fortunate to stay up last season. Um, I don't think they've improved by the, the signings. I do like Thomas Frank, but I think his style of play and his squad have become a little bit stale. Um, I also think they may lose Tony late in the window, which will be a huge blow to them. So I've got them 16. Yeah. 17, I've gone for Bournemouth, but I could easily, I agree with what you said about Leicester, I could easily swap those two rounds. I said Bournemouth have got a good coach. I'm losing Solanke is a huge blow. Who they place him with could be the distance between a scrap and a comfortable mid-table finish, but I'm going to go, uh, go for the latter. Oh, sorry, go for the former, and um, for that for that yeah. reason. Interesting. Um, so 17th, I've got Southampton again, similar to Leicester. They'll feel like a a, a prem side, and I think it's going to be between them and Ipswich who, who kind of stay up out of the ones promoted. And um, again, I just maybe this is me being very naive, but they just seem like a Premier League team. Um, I, and I think that kind of experience, it's only been a few years since we've been there. I think, yeah, I, I just think they'll be up and um, it's going to be between them and Ipswich, I think. So so as an 18th, I've unfortunately got Ipswich. I want them to stay up. They were a bit like Luton for me like, last season. I really wanted Luton to stay up. Um, didn't I really want Ipswich. I think they play some great football, but I just think the step up might be too much for them. And I think, like I say, Southampton in 17th and I've got Ipswich at 18th. They'll be them too fighting for that kind of um, that last relegation spot or, or avoid that last relegation spot I should say OK yeah I mean I've got I've got all three of the promoted teams going down and oh really need to be yeah because I mean they're the only three teams I've got left now so the order I've put them in might as well just get this, this over with I actually think I was in the city I, I agree with the Premier the Leicester the team that have got genuine Premier League quality in the squad mm. I wouldn't be surprised in the in the slightest, if they just about stay up, they've got a feeling. I said, got a feeling. I think there's a strong chance they bring in a, a toss forward before the end of the window, and that might just be the difference. Um, I don't agree with you with Southampton. I look at the squad, and I don't think they've got enough Premier League quality. Um, so I've got them bottom, and I've got Ipswich in 19. I think Ipswich, the difference between Ipswich and Southampton, I think Ipswich have got more goals in them. But the defence is nowhere near good enough for Ipswich, nowhere near. Mm. I think the biggest step up, and you hear it so many times, for players when they come from the championship to Premier League to the Premier League, is is defended against the, the quality of forwards that, that are on display. And I just look at used. I think this will be a statement this weekend. I think used will get three or four against them. And it'll be a bit of a rude awakening for them um, defensively. Mm. I do think they'll score goals, and I do think they'll get enough home wins to finish above Southampton. But I, I don't see Southampton to it getting more than 25 points, to be honest. OK, so my, my bottom three then, I've gone for Ipswich in 18th, I've gone for Forest in 19th, and Bournemouth in 20th. Uh, so I'll start from the bottom. I think Bournemouth, um, s- simple, simple as this, losing Solanke, I think, will kill them. He was, got how many goals did he get last season? Do you know what I mean? He was unbelievable for them. Taking a strike like that out of your team is just, it's so, so dangerous, and I think that that's going to kill them. So we've got Bournemouth finishing bottom. Not Forest. The last couple of seasons, they just seem to have done this experiment of just bringing in loads and loads of players, selling loads of players. And I just think it's going to it's gonna come short at one point. And uh, I think this could be the season. And like I say, Ipswich have got in the final spot. But I think I think it'd be between them and Southampton who, who go down. So I've actually got two, two of the teams that were promoted will stay up and only one of them going down. Um so yeah, we'll see how we get on there at the end of the season with our points going, see wins. I'll try and uh, try and get a big trophy this season. Right, we'll go into the <laughs> top. 
I was going to say, I think, I think that I think what's going to define is is the bottom half, and I think our top half is fairly similar. It's probably only two yeah. positions that we've disagreed with, with it being fourth. I think fourth, fifth, and sixth. But the bottom half is where uh, certainly towards the bottom is where the differences are. So yeah, yeah let's see. Um, so my top, I go through mine and first. So top scorers, I know it's really obvious to pick Haaland, but I've actually gone for Cole Palmer. I think he was brilliant at the end of last season, and if like we've already mentioned, Chelsea kind of can find the groove a bit earlier and not, not leave it too late. I think if they do anything this season, it'll all be through Cole Palmer. So I know the favourite will be Haaland. wouldn't surprise me if you put Haaland, but I think Cole Palmer will give him a good run for his money. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't, I, I certainly wouldn't disagree with that, but I have, I've gone for Haaland. I, I was actually, I was actually really torn between Haaland and Diego, Diogo Jota. I look, I need Diogo Jota. Which Jota is, is a proper bagsman, and I think the style of play that um, that the new manager, you know, the, the way he plays, he needs someone like him in the team. And I think Jota will play a lot more games than he has in recent seasons. So I think mm. Jota will be nice players to watch. I think he'll get a lot more goals. I, I hope so because he, he is an absolute bowler. Um, a bit of a mad one, and I, I didn't put him in not just for this reason, but I know he's going to be injured at the start of the season. I think Hoyland will have a great a great season. You know. Under Ten Hag, I think he, I think he'd become a good player. Um, maybe not top goal scorer, but yeah. Um, most improved team, I've put Man United. Again, I mentioned it before. I think three seasons in now for Ten Hag. I think so much young talent with Ganacho, um, Kobe Mainu, again Hoyland, like I just mentioned. I think you know, I seen on the overlap. Carragher was talking about them him being sacked by January. I think United will, will shock a few people. I really do, um, and I've got them to be, you know, most improved. Yeah, no fair enough. Most most improved for me is is Chelsea. Um, I, I just think they've got that many players. As long as you can fail to improve on on certain the starts of the season you had last season, I think people need to probably look back at some of the the comments that were made about them around October, November of, of maybe finishing you know fourteen, fifteen. Obviously, a big factor there is the coach and, and the impact that maybe has in the second half of the season. But I think when you get all those players first, I, th- I still think it'll take them four or five games to to click into gear. But I just think. They got a much better spine, uh, you know, and, mm-hmm. and a spine that's fit. Um, I think the only thing, or the big thing that, that probably could prevent them finishing fourth to me is the goalie. I don't think I've seen mm-hmm. such a talented squad, which is such a poor set of goalkeepers. It's remarkable that they haven't brought in a top top keeper. But yeah, Chelsea most improved team for me. Uh, players to watch. I've, I've gone for two. I've mentioned one of them already, Kobe Mainu. I, I think yeah. I just think he'd be really, really good. He was unfortunate with an injury last season. If he stays fit, I think he'll play a massive part from the United season. And because of the new manager coming in, we mentioned a little bit then, style of play. I think uh, Dominic Sobis, like Liverpool, I think he could be really... He started off last season all right and he kind of faded a bit. I think under this new manager, new style of play, there's that potential for them to just work the system right. And I think he could be one to watch, obviously. No, wouldn't... Uh... Wouldn't disagree with you there. I've gone through a few players here. I'm not going to go into war and peace on all of them. Sandro Tonali, I've already spoken about. Um, Yakubu Minter for, for Brighton. He's got bags of pace. He scores a few goals in pre-season. Um, he, he looks like, together with Matoma, they, they could be a serious cadet. Um, I just don't I just don't rate them at the back, Brighton, which is why I've put them in, you know, put them in a night position rather than higher up. Um, the other players I've gone for, Morgan Rogers of Villa. I think he's a top, top player. I think he was good last season. I think he's going to get even better this season. He's got the platform of the, the Champions League as well. A serious, serious talent. Diogo Jota, I've just spoke about. I think he'll play more games this season. I think the system will suit him better than the, the more direct style that the clock plays. And I think he'll get more chances. And I think he'll really go finish it. The last one for me, um, Mazoweki from, from Chelsea. Um, again, one of those players who flashed okay, in the seed last season, but I think he's, I think he's a player who'll get more minutes this season, a bit more faith showing in him, and I think he'll he'll deliver some some serious returns. I think to Chelsea, and I'll probably chip in a bit more of the from the goals from uh, from Cole Palmer. Okay, mate, and we'll finish off then with relegation risk. Now, I couldn't have a topic of relegation risk and not try and wire people up by mentioning Everton's name. Um, like I've just said, listen, you just could easily have a have an half decent season, finish a comfortable mid table finish. You know, I like Sean Dyche. I think, you know, you're solid at the back. Given what he's working with, I think, you know, you've outperformed at certain times. And, you know, you grind results out. You've got 
the optimism of a new stadium, etc. All that. However, I think all that could very quickly change off the field stuff. I think, you know, if you're going through the season and gets towards Christmas time and you're in a bit of rocky form, administration starts looming, the headlines are negative each week, you lose a few bad results, I think things could very quickly change. And, you know, you've got the points deduction looming over. This. I mean, a ball's not even being kicked yet. People are already talking about potential points deduction. I mean, honestly, I do actually, joking aside, feel sorry for, you know, listen, you know, for all my boss mates, I've got loads of boss mates who lose it. Before a ball is kicked, you've got these problems looming over you. It, it's fucking shite for you, as it really is. And I just think, despite the optimism of playing some good football, good goalie, all that, you could quite easily lose your keeper. You could quite easily get a points deduction. You could quite easily go into administration. And there's so many variables that I think it, it wouldn't be the biggest shock in the world if you do end up getting relegated. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I personally think we'll have new owners by the end of August. Um, I don't think a lot of those. Really? Those, yeah, I don't. I don't think a lot of those become a factor. Um, I think it's just a matter of the the current Palace majority shareholder being able to sell those Palace shares to be able to buy us. I think. I think it's that that simple. But anyway, uh, as I'm, as I can't, I'm not in a strong enough position to disagree with all the stuff you've just said as well. Um, relegation risk. As originally went for Bournemouth, but because I've already done finishing seventeen. I've gone for Fulham. Um, I genuinely believe Silva will be out the job by January, if not earlier. Yeah, I just mm. think he's got the tendency to sulk. He's done that a few times already in the last few seasons, but this window will be the last straw for him. Uh, they've lost like two or three good defenders in the window and haven't replaced them, and Silva's not renowned for being a good coach generally anyway in terms of keeping that back door shut. I just don't see enough quality in the final third at all uh, there anymore um, so I think I think I look at their squad and I look at their starting 11 I don't think there's a great deal of difference yeah. you've seen Leicester's and, and, and Southampton's and, and even Ipswich's so yeah you look at the I days when you've had like Mitrovic and stuff and you down. don't really look at the fun you don't really see the fun until you and see those big kind of sirens do you big names where you think oh yeah it's, it's going to be a tough game today well they, they, they paid 35 million for Smith Rowe I'm sorry but Smith Rowe is it he's an okay player you know, he's decent, but he's not yeah. going to be getting, like, you know, 10, 10 goals and, and, and save his mm. amount us. And if he's going to get assists, he needs a, a tough forward to be working with. Yeah. I, I think he, he could be like a bit of an Awobi signing again for them. Mm. And I know what Awobi's like. He, he can be patchy. So, and he's probably their main man, Awobi, you know, um, along with me. De- Deco's over Reed. Deco's over Reed for me is a championship player. And he's playing every week for them now. So, yeah, mm. they could easily be, be relegated. Yeah, no, I'd, yeah, definitely agree. Um, that's top to bottom done. Top goal scorer, surprise packages, relegation risks, and what have you. Um, don't forget as well, the fancy football is starting this weekend. It's 20 quid uh, to enter. All you need to do is message to Twitter or Instagram, and I will be adding personally £500 for a pop at the end of the season. We've got prizes for first, second, third, and prizes each week, uh, sorry, each week five to five, 10, 15, 20, 25. We're giving out prizes. Get involved again. All you need to do is message the Insta, Insta or the Twitter. On top of that, if you are one of the supporters of the Lego Podcast on Patreon, me and Gary put out a bet every week. I pick a treble, Gary picks a treble, and we roll up in a six-fold. We had some big winners last season, didn't we? So, um, yeah. had a bit of luck. Hopefully that luck continues and uh, can pay, pay for a few beers for you over the weekend. So get involved by signing up on Patreon and we'll keep them coming. All right, Gary, I know you're on all of these, so thank you for your time. Hope everyone has a boss weekend and we'll see you all next week.